I'm working with a document called changebackground.psd, which is available in your resources directory. This is an image taken by Graph Photo, which is available on iStockphoto.com. What we want to do with this image is change the background color. And we're going to build on the techniques that we talked about in the previous movie. In the previous movie, we were making selections and refining the edges of those selections. We're going to pretty much do the exact same thing in this movie, but with a little bit more technique to hopefully produce more professional results. In this case, instead of working with the selection directly, we're going to be working with a layer mask. Now, selections, layer masks, generally pretty much the same thing, but I just want to show you a different way of working with a similar problem. In this example, though, instead of removing the background and replacing it with a new background, what I simply want to do is just change the color of the background. In order for us to achieve that, we need to make a selection. We need to select this model and keep her away from this background. So I'm going to start this off by coming over and creating a layer mask. You can simply click this button down here towards the bottom of the layers panel. When you click it, you add a layer mask to this layer. So the first thing that we need to do is, like I said, isolate the model from the background. The easiest way to do that, or to start this off, is to come over in the Masks panel and click the Color Range button. This, of course, is going to open up a dialog box. What this dialog box allows us to do is select a range of colors. We can do that by sampling different color values. Right now I have the eyedropper tool selected in this dialog box. What I'm going to do is simply click in the top left hand corner to start the selection. And basically what I'm asking Photoshop to do is select a color range of pixels based upon the area that I just clicked. Now of course we need to add to that. So there's two options available to us here. We can simply highlight this eyedropper tool here which will allow us to add to the current sample. Or the keyboard shortcut of course is the shift key. If you hold down the shift key, you'll continue to add to the selection. And you can do this either in the dialog box or over here in the image. Doesn't really matter. Something else that you can do to save a little bit of time is simply click and drag, which makes the selection happen a little bit faster. And again, like I said, you can do this in either location, either in the dialog or in the actual image. Now there's a couple problem areas here that we can see not only in the dialog box, but a little bit more clearly in the actual image. Notice the top left hand corner here. I'm going to want to add that, so I'm going to hold down the shift key and click up there. And of course that didn't do exactly what I wanted to do, so I'm going to go ahead and undo that. Command Z is the keyboard shortcut to be Control Z on Windows. I'm going to go ahead and try that over here in the dialog box. I must have clicked somewhere outside of the image which caused that problem. In any event, we also have a problem area down here by the model's neck, so I'm going to simply add to that selection as well. So this is a good starting point. Obviously there's some problems with this mask because we can see a little bit of the model coming through in what we'd want to be a solid white area. But like I said, this gives us a pretty good starting point for isolating the model off of the background. You can always adjust this fuzziness slider as well to increase or decrease the color range values that you have selected. I'm pretty happy with where it was. I'm going to leave it somewhere in the 30 range. Every image is going to have different requirements. Once you're done with this, go ahead and click OK. When you click OK, you can see the layer mask. And what we want to do is we want to modify this layer mask a little bit. In order for us to modify this layer mask, it's oftentimes a little bit easier to kind of view the mask in a black and white fashion. We can do this by holding down the Option key on the Mac, it would be Alt on Windows, and clicking on this actual layer mask. Now, here we can really see the problems that this mask has. We're missing a lot of detail here inside the model's face. We need to get this to a true black to have a really good polished mask. So the easiest way to solve this problem is to highlight maybe the brush tool. And with the brush tool, you want to paint black. So I'm going to come over here and switch this. X is the keyboard shortcut to make sure that black is the foreground color. You want to stay away from your edges. You don't want to get too close to your edges. We're going to be doing a lot of modifications with our edges, so we don't want to alter their current state. So I'm just going to simply click and drag inside the area of the model to kind of really darken up the areas where we want the mask to be pretty strong, like over her face, her eyes, her lips things like that. And you can 
play around with the brush sizes by using the angle keys on your keyboard to bump up or decrease the size of the brush. The ear will be a little bit difficult. You see I'm getting too close to the edge there, so I'm just going to leave that alone. I don't want to get too close to the edges. Uh, what you may want to do is select a harder brush so the edges are a little bit harder so you can get a little bit closer to this model's ear. So just go ahead and clean this up, and you can do the same for the background color as well. Go ahead and press X again. Now you're painting with white. You just want to paint the outer regions of this image. Again, just to kind of make sure that you have everything selected that you want to have selected. And you want to stay kind of far away from these edges. I know I messed this edge up a little bit, so I'm going to try to correct it just a tad. But again, we're going to spend a lot of time on those edges, so don't lose sleep over making small mistakes like that. It's something that we're going to easily be able to fix. So this looks pretty good at this point. So what we want to do is, again, look at this image in its traditional sense outside of the mask black and white view. So again, holding down the Option key, the Alt key on Windows, go ahead and click on the mask in the layer panel to see your selection. So it's looking pretty good at this point. Obviously, we need to make some corrections here. The other thing is we obviously have the wrong thing masked out. So inside the masks panel, go ahead and click the invert button. And now we can see what our model looks like. And we can also see that there is some refinement that needs to take place. In order for us to refine these edges and this mask selection, what we want to do is click the mask edge button in the masks panel. When you do that, it opens up a dialog box, much like the refine edge command that we were looking at in the previous movie when we're talking about refining the selection edge. So here, we're going to kind of play around with some of the same values and options. The first thing that I want to do is kind of zoom in to the model's face. As we zoom into her face, we can see that this selection is pretty jagged and fairly poor, and that's something that we want to correct. So we're going to come over here and click Smart Radius again. Remember, we talked about that in the previous movie, which is basically just determining the distance between the edge of the selection and the foreground and background objects. So with that option selected, go ahead and modify the radius a little bit. I'm just going to go ahead and bump this up. As I bump it up, you can see that it's really starting to smooth out quite a bit. I'm going to go ahead and bump it up a little bit more. I'm also going to smooth out the edge. I'm going to come over here and type in a value of 2. And what I like to do when working with the smooth option in the adjust edge section is I like to play with the contrast as well. I'm going to bump this up quite a bit. And you can see that we're really getting a much better selection now. I'm going to smooth it out just a little bit more. If we go ahead and check show original, we can see what the original selection looked like. If we deselect that, we can see what the new selection looks like. Now, there is some color contamination from the original background graphic, that reddish gradient. So I'm going to go ahead in the output panel and check decontaminate colors. I'm going to amp that up a little bit, and you can see that that red hue is kind of going away. To zoom out, I'm going to hold down the Alt key or the Option key on the Mac. We can see that this selection right now looks pretty good. And all around her hair, it's looking much better. Again, if we show the original, we can see how jagged it was. And we'll go ahead and turn this back on. We can see how much refining we did and how much better it actually looks. So again, we can see the before and after here. So we can see that the selection is a lot smoother and softer where we need it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. But before I click OK, you want to make sure that you're outputting this new refined mask to a new layer with the layer mask, which means not only are we going to have our original layer with a layer mask, but we're going to have another new layer with a layer mask added to it. So go ahead and click OK. Once you click OK, we see the before and after again by turning on the visibility of each layer. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the visibility of the original selection. And I'll go ahead and turn on the visibility of our new refined selection. You can see that it's starting to look a lot better. There are some problems still, though. If we take a look at this, we're losing some detail in our hair, which isn't what I want. And we need to kind of correct some of these problem areas still. So the best bet here in this particular scenario is to go over to the Masks panel again and go ahead and click Mask Edge a second time. What this is going to allow us to do is basically refine our refined mask. So we can really add a whole new level of refinement to our selections. In this case, what I want to do is come over here and use these tools. These tools 
will allow us to refine or erase any refinements that we make to the edges. So I'm going to go ahead and select the Refine Radius Brush. And what I want to do is just kind of click and drag. And as I click and drag, you'll notice I'm bringing back the detail of some of her hair that's just wisping around up here towards the top of her head. Now this is something that we lost in the previous refinement. We're kind of bringing it back in this one. So I'm just going to go ahead and click and drag around certain parts of her hair to bring back some of those hair details. We had a pretty soft selection and we know that it's probably not all that realistic not to have these little wisps of hair. So I'm just going to come over, click and drag around her head. And again, basically what we're doing as we do this is we're telling Photoshop to really reevaluate the edges of this content. And we're bringing back quite a bit of her hair down here towards the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and hold down the space bar to activate my hand tool. I'm going to go ahead and click and drag. I know there's quite a bit more down here by her shoulders, so I want to go ahead and get some of that detail back. And I think I'm pretty happy with that. Again, you want to spend some time zooming into different areas. And again, you can do that with the keyboard shortcut. I'm going to hold down Space Command. It would be Space Control on Windows. You can zoom in to the edges and really see the detail we're getting back in her hair. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out. I'm pretty happy with this. Again, you can spend a little bit more time on it. But once you're happy with it, you may have to come in and maybe adjust the radius a little bit. Maybe smooth out the selection a tad more. I'll go ahead and type in one here and play around with the contrast a little bit more. Once you're happy with that, you can go ahead and click OK. In this case, for the output two, we're going to do the same thing. We want to create another new layer with a layer mask. So we're going to have three layers with three layer masks. So go ahead and click OK. Once you click OK, we can really start cycling through this and see the differences between the selections that we made. So if we look at the original, we can see that we don't really have much detail in our hair, and we have a pretty jagged selection around the perimeter of her face. If I look at the next selection, we kind of softened that up quite a bit. We also softened up the selection around her hair, but we lost a little bit of detail, but it's certainly a much more professional, better looking selection. I'll go ahead and turn this off and turn on our last selection. Not only do we have nice soft edges where we need it, but we also have detail where we need it, and that is in her hair. So finally, what we want to do is we want to look at how we could modify and change the background color of the original image. To do that, I'm going to turn on the visibility of the first layer. With that, we want to turn off the mask of this layer. So go ahead and hold down the Shift key and click on the mask to turn it off. So now we can see our selected model on the top layer. And we can also see the background in the model layer. With this bottom layer selected, we're going to go ahead and add an adjustment layer by clicking this little button right here. And we're going to choose Hue Saturation. And here what I want to do is just drag this hue slider around. And as we do, you can look at the detail in her hair to see how good this selection is. We've really been able to select fine detail of her hair all over her head while maintaining a nice soft selection around the edge of her face. So I really want to go through this just to show you that you can use a combination of techniques and you can layer those techniques on top of one another to get the best, most professional looking results.